Hello and welcome to a new Django project in our backend development series. In this tutorial, we're going to build a blog website using Django for the backend, and also I'm going to use the Django template language for the front end. Now, the prerequisites are just your Python knowledge and a basic understanding of how Django framework works. I mean, how to create a project, how to create an app, how to make the necessary configuration steps to the various files, and so on. The blog application we're going to write today will allow you to create, modify, and delete blog posts. So, as you can see here, we have different blog posts. Uh, this allows the user or the reader just to read more. So you and other users potentially can write the posts using the Django admin website. And you can see here that uh, we have different posts and they are organized by title, slug, status, and created on date. If you want to add a post, you can add a post easily by uh, clicking on add post. Here is the title, slug, and you can choose the author, right? And here's the text and you have um, a status toggle between draft and published. So the management of the blog posts are done in the Django admin panel and the website itself allows you and the readers to read the posts. Okay, so you can click on read more and um, it should expand on the article. And I've added here a sidebar uh, about can visit my website if you have your own website. And this is a button that can take you to the Django documentation uh, website. And here we have different links, reports, policy, contact. I didn't create these pages, but you can potentially do it. Okay. And that's all. This is a very simple blog post website that just displays what you write in the back end. And I'm using Bootswatch. Uh, if you have been following me, you know that I love Bootswatch themes. And the one that I'm using currently is Flatly. So before we get started, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're not already and to share the video with your friends who are into Python and Django because this will help the channel to grow bigger. All right, let's get started. First of all, let me go to desktop and I will create a directory, a folder, and I will call it blog project. And I'm going to use virtual environment. Um, I use PPNV and it's always good practice to use virtual environment because this allows your dependencies that you install in your specific project to be only installed inside that folder, inside that project and not globally. If you will install the dependencies globally, this might result in some conflicts in the system. Okay, so let's isolate all dependencies and packages that we will need in that specific project in that folder. And for that, we're going to use virtual environment. Okay, so this is the idea uh, why we use virtual environments usually in the projects and why it is a good practice. So I'm going to use PPNV. If you don't have it, you can install it via pip install PPNV. Okay, but if you have it already, you can go ahead and um, install Django using PPNV install Django. All right, perfect. Now to activate the project's virtual environment, we need to run the command ppnv shell. Great, now we are inside our virtual environment. So let's go ahead and create our project, Django admin start project. I'm going to call it project. And let's cd to project. And inside our main project folder, we're going to create an app. To do that, we'll use the command python manage.py start app and I'm going to call our main application app with a capital A. All right, fantastic. Now I'm going to open my Django project using Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to type code space dot and hit enter. And this will open uh, Visual Studio Code automatically. So the first thing we need to do is to add the application in the settings.py we have installed apps. We will need to add app to our installed apps. And obviously, if you have a different name for your application, you will need to add the same name, all right? And let's actually try to run the server to make sure that everything is working okay. Python manage.py run server. Let's go ahead and open that. 
Okay, perfect. We have the default page for Django Web Framework. Okay, so let's minimize that for the moment and let's scale the server because now we will need to define the data models for our block. Okay, and models, if you don't know, is just a Python class. Let me just open models quickly. So models exist in your main application folder. So models is just a Python class and we get to define attributes that represent a database field. And you probably know that the default database system in Django is SQL Live 3, but you can change to SQL Alchemy or PostgreSQL or any other system that you're comfortable with. Uh, you can do that in settings.py here in your databases dictionary and you can change your database engine uh, very simply. Okay, but we're not going to do that today. We're going to leave it at SQL Live 3. So the first thing that I want to do is to import user class. And user class is just a class for users within your Django authentication system. So this user class exists in Django.contrib.auth.models. Okay, we will import user. This is the first thing. And the next thing I want to declare a status variable and it's going to be a tuple. And this will hold two different variables, zero for draft post and one for published post. So status capitalized like that, equal to a tuple draft. We also have one which is published post. I'm going to create a class and I will call it post and it has models.model as the main input or the main parameter. And I will have different fields here, different columns. So the first column is the title models dot, and this is char field with a maximum length of 200 characters, unique equal to true because it is a unique field or unique column. Similarly for the slug, and slug will be equal to models dot slug field, not char field attribute with a maximum length of 200 as well and it is a unique field and I will need an author obviously and this is a foreign key and if you don't know the difference between the primary key and foreign key you'll find a card taking you to um, two quick videos where I explained uh, in brief the SQL Live 3 basics okay and there you will find the difference between a primary key and foreign key so we'll have the user class as our first parameter and I want an attribute called on delete will be equal to models dot cascade. And this simply means if you are going to delete the author, what if that author X has different blog posts? So the deletion of the author's name should cascade to other blog posts as well to reflect that deletion. And let's give it a related name, but it's not a must, okay? And I'm going to say blog posts, for instance. Let's see what also we need. We need a timestamp. So a created on field is equal to models dot data time field. And let's give it auto now add, auto now add attribute as of now, as of the current date. And we also need an updated on date. So if you will make any modification to your blog post and you will hit save, this will update automatically the date of the modification. The only difference is we don't want to add a new date. We just want to update it. We want obviously the content. So the content is a text field. So models.text field. And last but not least, we need a status. So status is equal to models dot integer field because we have a zero and one. I'm going to uh, set the choices to be equal to the status capitalized above. And we were going to set the default to be zero, to be a draft block post. We're also going to need a metadata. So class meta and the metadata tells Django to sort results in the created on column. So that created on column will have different dates and we're going to let Django organize the posts using a descending order. 
So let's see how we'll do that. So ordering variable is going to be equal to the created on in order to make it in a descending order, just put a minus sign before it. That's it simply. And we also want a string representation. So uh, dunder method stir. And I have a video by the way, uh, where I'm explaining the difference between the stir and the wrapper methods. You can check it out, you will find uh, a card appearing right now. If you're interested, you can check it out. So passing self inside and we want to return self dot title. All right, perfect. Now that we are done with database creation, let's go ahead and make migrations and make migrations is responsible for creating new migrations based on the changes that we have made now in our post class. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, say Python manage dot pi make migrations. I made a comma instead of dot. Oops, we have an error. Uh, has no attribute data time date time field. I apologize for that typo date time field. Uh, let's do that one more time. Python manage dot pi make migrations. All right, perfect. Now let's go ahead and migrate. So Python manage dot pi migrate. But before that, we will need to create a super user, Python manage.py create super user. And this will allow you to create a user uh, with a username and a password in order to add posts, uh, delete them, modify them and so on. All right, so I'll say back one, two, three, one, two, three, that's okay. Let's run the server one more time. And let's uh, get back to our browser and refresh the page slash admin in order to access our admin panel. So username back, password one, two, three, and hit enter. And now we have accessed our Django admin panel. But we can't add posts yet because we will need to register uh, our post class inside our admin file. So let's get back to our code. Let's open admin.py and let's register our uh, post class in models.py inside our admin. We will import from dot models from the current directory. We want to import post and we will say admin dot site dot register and we were going to register our post class. That's it simply. Once you save that and get back to our Django admin website and you will hit refresh, immediately you will find uh, a new app has appeared with your posts. So you can add posts and let's say for instance blog one slug will give it title of blog one author the only author for the moment is back and lorem ipsum for instance published hit save and boom we have our first post but let's organize this a little bit and let's add some filtering so this is very simple and easy actually so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new class. We'll call it post admin, admin dot model admin. And here we will have our uh, list display. First title, slug, status, and created on. And let's have a filter as well. So list underscore filter is equal to, and here we'll say status. Also, let's give it a search field to search um, for the blog posts by title, for instance, by content, anything. 
And here we can specify the fields via which we want to search for our blog posts. So we'll say title, we can give it also content, and that's quite enough. So let's go to admin site.register and add our post admin class. We'll save that. Let's get back to our admin website, hit refresh, and boom, we have our filter, our different columns here. It's going to be organized using the descending order uh, from the latest to the oldest. So let me give you another example quickly and blog post, let's say blog to save. And you'll find that the blog to is uh, on the top and the older blog is below. So far, everything is working perfectly. And that's absolutely fine if you want to leave it at that. But you can create these blog posts and display them on your website that like I've showed you at the beginning of the video, which will be dedicated only to show your articles to your audience. So you as the admin will have the authorization to create, edit and delete your articles. But the reading feature is accessible to everyone else who is checking your website, right? So the website is going to be only for the view for the display. So let's go ahead and build the views. So let's go quickly to views.py. Actually close that for now. Import from current directory models. We'll import the post class and I want also to import generic and generic has a built in subclass or a class on its own called list view. So I'm going to import from Django dot views. I will import generic. So let's go ahead and create a new class. I will call it post list. And here I'm going to use the list view method list view and generic has two different methods list view and detail view and as you can see here that list view is a method that renders some list of objects set by self.model or self.query set okay and you will understand better when we will declare the variable called query set and i'm going to use the query set variable to apply a filter so that only the post with status published be shown at the front end of our blog. So this simply will be equal to post dot objects dot filter. And the filter method will take the status and we will define it as published or one. And we want it to be displayed in a descending order. So dot order by method and minus created on to reverse the order and the template name that I'm going to use for that is going to be the home page or index.html which we didn't create it yet but for the moment we just um, define it as index.html and I will need also the detail view so I'm creating another class detail view dot detail view and I want to include the post class. So I'm going to store it in a variable called model. And the template name is going to be equal to post detail.html. And this is used for read more button. When you will click read more button, you will have uh, the article or the blog post in detail, the full blog post. So post detail.html. All right, great. Now we will need to map the URL for these views. Why? Because when you or the reader makes a request for a page on your blog app, Django will look for the corresponding view throughout URLs.py. And we have seen this in all the previous Django projects we have built together. But if this is your first time on the channel, then you should know that Django maps the views to URLs in order to render the corresponding template and hence you can get the page you're looking for. All right, hope that makes sense. So we will need now to create the urls.py file in our main uh, app folder. So let's go ahead and do that, urls.py. And be careful because we have a different urls.py in the main project folder. So let me make sure that I have saved that views.py file first. Close it, close it, close it. And let's import from the current directory the views file. And we also want to import from django.urls. We want to import path. 
all right, in URL patterns. This looks exactly like the urls.py file in the, in the main project folder. And the first path with an empty route. And this should direct you to views.postlist.asView. And we can give it a name, but it's not necessary really. And let's also give it another access by the slug. So you can access the block by slug. And this is actually the same as the one above. And I'm also going to give it a name, but names are an optional parameter, as I said, and that's all. Uh, just a very important, small detail. Don't forget to add a comma here. Otherwise, you will get an error. All right, perfect. Now we need to include these blog URLs to our URLs.py file inside our project folder. Okay, so let me first add here include path here will say include and I have my app dot URLs all right as we are done with models and views and we have also set up our URLs we need to make templates to render the result to our users so in order to render our HTML templates we will need to go to settings.py let's go to settings.py and go to DIRS here and we'll say stir base dir dot join path and the folder is going to be called templates as usual and I have a full Django tutorial explaining how to render HTML templates how to add CSS images and JavaScript files to your Django project and you will find a card appearing right here you can click it and check it out if you're not sure what's going on just for the time's sake I'm not going to write the HTML files but I'm going to explain what's going on underneath the hood let's create a folder called templates base.html and base.html is very important because we will have different pages and we want some sort of template that can be inherited in different web pages okay so in order to reduce code redundancy we write the base.html one time and we're going to import it we're going to extend it actually in different html files so we also need index.html which is going to be our home page we will also need post detail, which is going to be uh, the full article that you're interested in reading. And finally is the sidebar, but again, it's not necessary. Uh, it's just for good design, nothing more. So let's start by base.html file. It's a very simple HTML file with a title, all right, with the Bootswatch um, link. As I showed you at the beginning of the video, you can select your favorite or from here directly your favorite theme you can copy the link you can paste it here here I have a link and when you will click on daily blog posts it will take you to the same page basically it doesn't do anything then again we have reports policy contact on in the nav bar uh, on the right side so as I said this is the default page the design itself is not going to change from one page to the other What's going actually to change, what's going to be inside the blog content. Let's go to index.html, which is our main page. So first thing, we are going to extend base.html. Then what's coming after is going to be the blog content. And what's inside the blog content is going to be plugged inside that base.html page. Okay, I hope that makes sense, guys. And this will change from one page to the other. Here we're looping in post list, so for post in post list, and we are displaying each post by title, author, and created on date. And here we're using only a slice of 200 characters from the overall page. Let's actually run the server. Perfect, so you can see our block two and block one that we have created in our Django admin panel. Let's close that, okay we have our for loop we are looping in the post list to display each blog post from uh, in a descending order from the latest to the oldest and as I told you we have a slice of 200 characters so uh, in the other example you saw that there is um, a chunk of that article which is displayed for only 200 characters and you can determine the amount of characters that you want to display easily so 200 you can say 100 you can say 300 as you like also we have the read more button then we have the block sidebar so block sidebar 
end block sidebar and in between we're going to plug that web page that we have created all right the sidebar is just this part block sidebar and block sidebar and in the middle we have our code the last thing that I want to show you is the post detail so again we are extending the base.html and between the block content and end block content we have our code so we have a container class with a row class and we are displaying everything else so what we're displaying actually is going to be this object title is between the block title and end block title which is block 2 for instance then we have the post.author which is back then uh, we have a separator then post.createdon which you can see here the date then object.content okay and then we are uh, having the block sidebar again and block sidebar just to include the sidebar.html. So this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next videos. Take it easy.